you were talking, asking about Canmore. But the thing is, Canmore was nothing in those days. You know, it was, it was nothing. It was a mining town, and there wasn't there to it. I mean, today, Canmore's a big deal. It was not a big deal in all my time. Even, even when I went to Exshaw, it was not. It was getting to be more of a big deal. But this is a little tiny mining town. Well, I drifted. I, I, this is not probably a good way of saying it, but I drifted from one occupation to another. So I left the hostel at Ribbon Creek in tears, actually. And I uh, forget why I was in tears, but I was in tears. And I ended up where I was going was the U of C field station as assistant cook or cook or something. Cooking, cooking saved the day in many t occasions. But uh, so I was at the field station, oh, not that long, maybe a year or so. And I was cooking and then I was full-time cook. You know, then I was, you know, first part-time then full-time cook. And then it's a 12-hour day, and I, did, I didn't want to do that for 12 hours. But also I had, st I had been weaving. This, this is the thing a lot of people don't realize. I'd been weaving for profit for a while because <clears throat> the wife of one of the scientists at the field station had taught us a, a weaving course. And I really got into it. So I'm weaving for profit, selling to the hostelers at Ribbon Creek. And then it gradually, I left the hostel in tears and I ended up full-time cook. I ended up cook at the field station. Oh, and then I realized I didn't want to spend my the rest of my life doing a 12-hour cooking day. And I had started doing a bit of writing. And so I thought I'd like to live in a little cabin and write and weave and see what would happen. So, and, and I had trouble finding a little cabin. But eventually I did, through, through a couple that were hostelers, but they lived near Sundry. And through them, I rented a little cabin about 16 kilometers south of Sundry. And it had a wood burning stove and it had water from a spring on one corner of the property. And it had an outhouse. Well, I had all, you know, I was just looking for exactly that kind of thing. So I, I moved in there and was weaving and writing. And that's when Lizzie died. The, the two things in my life that were just really important was Lizzie and Kananaskis. Canmore was nothing right. as far as my life was concerned. But Lizzie, my life became wrapped up in Lizzie for quite a while. She, you know, I visited her a lot. Then I started writing her biography because I was thinking about it, something to that effect. And then um, I was taking a hike up Co uh, Grotto Canyon, and I met Kiwi Gallagher and Fran and their two little boys on the trail. They were coming back, and I was going, and we got talking about Lizzie. 
and I, I don't know how it came out, but Kiwi said, you're the one to write Lizzie's story. So, okay, this is, this is October. And it was just like God saying, you're the one to write Lizzie's story. So he did. Lizzie had died. I knew Jane, who had moved into the seniors' home in Canmore. And I, I was visiting Janie a, a lot at that time because Lizzie worried about Janie and worried that, because Janie, Lizzie was the positive person, Janie was the negative, just in the way they view life and everything. So I, I wanted to look after Lizzie by looking after Janie. And so that's why I kept going there. Uh, Canmore, as a, as a place, no, it was Janie and Lizzie and me being, I felt my life was wrapped up at that point in Lizzie and Kananaskis. And in Kananaskis partially because I had been s starting to write the history of Kananaskis Valley. So those things kind of wrapped up. Somebody else's job is to do Canmore, but it's not mine. And it's, you know, to, to get to know that, okay, this is mine and this is not mine. I had these two books I wrote eventually on Kananaskis history. And I was selling them. Yeah, I got them. See how things float through my life. I start, I, we wanted, the director of the field station really wanted the history that I was writing put into print. And the, uh, the uh, anyway, the university type people, the academic side, they were interested in publishing my history but it would, it would take about three years before they'd get to it. So in the meantime, I had written this little hiking guide to the Kananaskis Valley. See how things drift? And I, I was going to be able to get it pu published through establishing my own little Ribbon Creek, Ribbon Creek hiking guide or something like that. And it wasn't quite that. But anyway, it was a, a little company that I established to, to do this little book. So then I told, when, when the university's uh, historical people were, said they would take too, too, too long for what the director and I wanted to get to my book, so I said, told the director, well, I could, I could publish that with this little publishing company I established. So off we went. And I, pu I published that. It was running out, of, running out of print. And the bookstores really wanted it because Kananaskis was a new thing and it was becoming quite interested in, the public was quite interested in it. And that, so I thought, oh dear. In the meantime, Jillian Daffron started their little publishing business that got bigger and bigger. And I went to them and I had my Lizzie book, which I, I think I published it, the first copy, the first issue. And so I went to Jillian and I said, these need to be a second printing. Do you want to do it? Yes, no hesitation. So they went, they went and took my two books and they did the second printing. 
So that was pretty neat.